Hello, welcome to Jask Draws. I am Jask and I draw. Today I'm sharing some more character reference art as per the norm for a D&D character I played in a level 20 one-shot not too long ago. Since they were only a one-time character, there isn't a whole lot of details to go into, but this is Prisma. They're a Nephilim cleric and monk, Nephilim being a half-celestial, half-tiefling homebrew race that I found. Prisma is probably in their young adulthood in the ballpark of 23 to 25 years old, maybe even like 27. I did not give them a definitive age because, again, it was a one-shot character and I wasn't really worried about those details. But anyway, they spent their late teen, early adult years training to be and acting as a soldier to fight wars and defend the kingdom that they swore loyalty to. They experienced a number of fights and were sent to the front line a lot, and while they didn't mind the fighting itself or the war, so much for what it was, they realized that the more they did fight and the more they saw how little help in recovery time that soldiers like themselves were being given, they came to realize that there were not nearly as many doctors or counselors around to help the soldiers. This was both in the middle of battle and after it, there was just nobody to help these people. Everyone was getting hurt left and right, they were carrying too heavy burdens, there were far too many fighters and far too little healers. So, Prisma retired from the Warfront. They shifted gears and focused instead on helping and healing people, and chose to pursue the path of a Light Cleric. They did continue to train physically, hence still having some monk levels, but it was more for a purpose of being able to defend others if the need arose than anything else. And I chose monk specifically rather than a fighter or a barbarian because I liked the idea of a cleric just tossing off their robes settling into a stance and being able to go hand to hand with somebody at a moment's notice. I was just a real big fan of a cleric who didn't need to rely on like a weapon or magic or anything like that. They had the power within themselves, plus clerics and monks share that fancy need for a wisdom stat, and I just thought it was going to be a little bit more mechanically balanced instead of investing in something not wisdom based. I also just really like the idea of monk cleric builds, usually with more monk levels than cleric levels, but I am getting off track. Prisma chose to pursue the path of a guardian rather than a fighter. I do like to think that Prisma ended up becoming a light cleric specifically because of their celestial heritage. Like, they were drawn to that domain because it was the domain of their celestial parent and it felt the most correct or the most natural to them, or something like that. I also like to think that Prisma didn't bother to think any deeper about their domain than that, and never dedicated themselves to a specific deity. They thought that they were already on the right track and simply followed it because, again, that felt correct. And honestly, what more do you need than a sense of something being right for you? Then maybe one day someone Prisma knew or had helped in the past asked them who they follow because they have no blatant symbolism or insignias for any gods anywhere on their clothes. Prisma would have no answer to this question and very quickly learned that there were several areas to worshipping the light that they were not clued in on. The news did not change how they operated, it just changed their answer to the question, who do you follow? Before, it was the light, singular. Now, it is the lights, plural.
Outside of knowing that one of their parents was Celestial and the other was a Tiefling, I didn't give Prisma any explicit family members, but they do have a boyfriend. His name is Dante, and he's a half-orc barbarian and bard. Dante was another player's character, and she and I went back and forth and talked about how they met, what their relationship was like, how they hung out, all that good stuff. They make a lovely pair, they go drinking constantly, they met in a bar that Dante frequented. Maybe someday I will draw the two of them having a good time together. Dante was very lovely, I wish to play with him more someday, but considering this was a one-shot, it might not be so likely. He will always have a special place in my heart, however. As for Prisma's design, they were a bit of a challenge for me. I don't usually work with colors or much white, but given this character's whole theme was going to be light-based, I figured it was fitting to do something bright and colorful. I had the idea for a tiefling with marble skin and horns that looked like stained glass for a very long time, and I decided to flesh out Prisma's design from that. I also decided that whenever they cast magic, it was going to be delightfully flavored with like fractured lights and things like that. Whenever light would hit their horns, little rainbows would show through the light and everything. Everything about Prisma that could be prismatic is. But beyond that base idea of just having a character based on prisms of light, I just winged the entire look. The only thing I had in mind for their outfit was something high-waisted with short baggy sleeves. The palette, the sash, the belt, the shoes, the golden accessories, all of that was added as I went through and I just put it on if I thought it was gonna look good. There was no premeditation to anything that has to do with Prisma's design. Throughout this video, you'll see how many times I go back and I add elements here or fix them there, like the golden rims and the beads, as well as Prisma's tail. I didn't plan to give them one at all, but when I got to the end of the whole creative process and looked at them as a whole, I felt like the horns were out of place. Nothing else about Prisma matched or emphasized the horns, and if anything, they were distracting. But I wasn't willing to get rid of them because the entire base design was so hinged on the prismatic horns and on that stained glass imagery. So, to balance them out, I opted for a whole tail and gave them, you know, more stained glass looking spiny bits along the back of it. When it was done, I was really, really happy with it, and the tail really completed the character more than I thought it would. As far as, like, harmonious design goes, I think the tail really works well because it matches the short and long contrasting design elements throughout Prisma's design. They've got short gloves, short hair, short sleeves, even a short part of their shirt is showing. Then they have equally long parts. They have their long staff, the sash, the coat, and the super long high-waisted pants. To have a tail at the bottom that flows and directs the eye up towards the top, it really completes the way that you see Prisma as a whole character. With that, I am out of time. This was a little bit shorter than my usual videos are, but here is Prisma for full viewing pleasure. 
Prism is my first cleric, and it was kind of a lot to jump into at level 20 right away, especially having never played one before. But they were really fun to draw, and it would be a shame if this design and Prisma as a character didn't go anywhere. But anyway, thank you again for watching. I really appreciate your time and the attention that you give these videos. And as always, if you would like to see more art, you can follow me on Tumblr at JaskDraws or on Twitter at J underscore Pomerlin. I have left links in the description and they're across the bottom of this video in the banner. If there's anything you would like to see me draw or any questions about the characters that I have drawn or will draw in the future, please leave them and I will be happy to answer your questions and requests. Thank you once again and I will see you next time.